Hey everyone, my name is Christine Kreischer and one of the pastors at GT Church and your host for the Growing Together podcast where we bring you new episodes every Wednesday to give you a midweek boost of encouragement and inspiration that will motivate you to finish your week strong in your faith. Today, we're sitting down with Pastor Eric Goldsbarrow. Eric wrapped up our series called Not Alone with a powerful message titled, Show Me, Don't Tell Me. His bottom line was caring is love in action. If you missed this message, please go back and watch it because it was a great reminder of the fact that God created us for community. We're not meant to work to walk alone. We are better together. And of course, Eric's big takeaway was to get in a life group at GT because if you want to experience love in action and if you want to grow spiritually, you've got to connect relationally. Eric, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Would you do me a favor and just take a quick second for those that aren't as familiar with you, you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your family real quick um, and what you do at GT. Yeah, um, so I've actually been part, I think I briefly said it in my message on Sunday, but I came to GT uh, as an 18 year old kid with absolutely no church background whatsoever. I was invited there actually by a girlfriend at the time that I would later marry. Um, her mother attended GT on a regular basis, and uh, we used to have, have some interesting conversations every time I would go over there. But uh, it was clear that she cared about me in a different way. Um, and uh, it was her impact in my life that really led me to GT. So I, I went there, and man, it was just, and I love hearing this today, it was different. There was something there that I had never felt in a church before. And I had been in churches, you know, funerals and weddings and so forth. But boy, this was this was different. And I liked it. So uh, it took a little while um, because of just where I was in life, a, a, an arrogant, prideful kid. And but I came faithfully. And in about three months, uh, I made a decision to follow Christ um, and to become a Christian and from there, my life was radically changed. And uh, like I said, Brian was a huge part of that. He was a young man coming out of Bible school, tremendous story. And we just, we clicked. Mm -hmm. So been part of GT uh, since I've been 18 years old, about four or five years into my walk, Pastor Tom Rees, one of the elders approached me and uh, asked if I would like to co-teach in second grade. And I was like, Yes, I'll do it. <laughs> I was terrified. I was never thought ever that I would be co-teaching second graders. I mean, it was crazy. Later on, Pastor Tom took me to uh, a big church in Chicago at some conference, and it was there that I really felt the call of full-time ministry in my life. I was 25 years old, just kind of doing life, job, mortgage, all that stuff, and didn't really know how that would unfold. And you know, I tell people the same advice that I was told. You need to just trust and obey God. Mm. Kept serving faithfully. Just, you know, let, let the Lord figure it out. Yeah. And so 2006, really fast forwarding here. Um, I remember Pastor Brian giving me a phone call and saying, Eric, listen, I know you have a call. I, I don't have anything full time, but we can we if we could work something out where you could be a part time junior high pastor and we'll just figure it out as we go. And man, I jumped on that. I was living the dream. 2008 came on full time as a JV youth pastor. Absolutely really loving it. I mean, just in my sweet spot, loving ministry, but I, I'm a big believer that God doesn't keep us in the same place that our life is a journey. Mm -hmm. And so we need to take steps of faith. And uh, Pastor Scott Kramer came to me, I think it was 2010 or 11 and, and asked me, to start praying if if I would be open to transitioning out of youth ministry into adult ministry and kind of an associate role. And uh, honestly, I wasn't interested. <laughs> I was so happy I in JV that. ministry. I'm like, no, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm good. <laughs> as the Holy Spirit does, boy, I was just continuing to get kind of pushed and prompt and encouraged and people speaking into my life. And, and I'll tell you the three men that really impacted me were, were Brian, Greg Hubbard, and Scott um, really looked up to those guys a lot and really took their advice. And I, I knew that I had to transition into that role. 
And I'm so glad I did. I, I didn't realize in youth ministry, I had a lot of growing to do. I was kind of in my own bubble in youth ministry and um, the Lord just keeps setting us up for what's next. And that's what he did. So I did that role for about four or five years. And then Pastor Scott again calls me. At this point, I don't even want to answer the phone. <laughs> hey, can we have lunch? Well, I know what that means in church lingo. Mm-hmm. So he, uh, he presented the, the thought and the prayer again of, hey, would you ever consider leading our campus in Kutztown? And I was really resistant to that. Um, again, I was comfortable. I was happy. Ministry was thriving. I loved what I was doing. My family was situated. My kids were situated. And this is, this is an amazing story, but the Lord used my son to give me the clear indicator of that I needed to make that commitment. It was amazing. Um, and my wife was very supportive too, but we took the jump. We were all in. Uh, it meant moving. It meant take, put my kids in another school. And, you know, faith is not always easy or comfortable, but when you know the Lord is leading, he's not going to fail you. And uh, I can tell you in 2021, we are right where God wants us. And there's, there's some unknowns yet, but God is working in incredible ways. And he has always, always provided. So that's me. So if you haven't seen me at West Lawn in the last five years, I've been up in Kutztown. <laughs> and tell, so tell us that little story real quick about um, how God used your son to kind of confirm so I, I have a, a great privilege to be able to take my kids to school uh, every morning and pray with them. I've done it ever since they've been in school. And um, so Scott and I had met, and you know, pray about this, talk about it with Marlene. And I'm just, Marlene was excited immediately. She's like, let's do it. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want to. And so I went to pick Nate up and I picked Nate up. Out of the blue, now this has been very heavy on my heart. I'm, I'm kind of resisting the Holy Spirit. And so God and I are having that, that wrestling match and the Lord's winning. I pick Nate up and out of the blue, Nate gets in my truck and he says, hey, dad, do you ever think we'll move? Immediately, I thought, oh, my wife talked to him. Why did she do that? So I'm like mad at my wife yeah. for going around me to, to kind of, and, and I was so wrong. She didn't do that. And I said, well, why do you say that, buddy? Now, he's doing really well in school, advanced classes, all that stuff. And I'm thinking, why would I said, is there a problem? Are you, you know, something happened? He said, no. He said, I just I just feel it's time to move and I just want to make new friends. And I was like, so I'm driving home and he didn't say anything else. And I could feel the Holy Spirit. This is what the Holy Spirit I I feel felt said to me. Do you trust me? Mm. Because my fear, and I didn't tell anyone this, my fear was to take my kids out of school because this is what happened in my life. My parents moved. And so when I moved from one school district to the other is where my life took a terrible turn. I got into the wrong crowd. Make it, and, I, and I'm thinking, you know, the devil's, the enemy's putting this thought in my head, not God. If you take your kids out of that school and put them in a new one, the same thing's going to happen. And so that's why the Holy Spirit said, do you trust me? No. And I'm, he, I'm going to use your son to show you that this is the right thing. It was just amazing. So I'm almost in tears. I get home and I'm like, Marlene, we need to talk. <laughs> She's like, what's wrong? And I told her. And right then we just looked at each other and said, we're in. We're yeah. doing this. Oh, that's so cool. And Marlene yeah. and Ava um, came up on stage this week with you. Um, so again, guys, if you haven't seen Eric's message, go back and watch it because you used a powerful illustration to show the power of, of a life group, right? Mm-hmm. And the impact of a life group in, in our lives. Um, so for those who didn't watch your message yet, can you just give us a quick recap of like, what was the point of that illustration? Yeah, so it was interesting. About a month ago, I was with Greg Hubbard and uh, with a group of guys, and he shared the verse from Exodus 17 about Moses. And he actually came to me, we would do devotions in the morning. He's like, Eric, look at this verse. Isn't it powerful? I said, Greg, that is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Just incredibly, the, the power of support and friendship in action, like 
incredible. So I'm a big illustration guy. Just for me, I love when pastors or speakers do something or show me something because it helps me retain what the point is. So I'm, I love trying to use some sort of illustration to, to emphasize the points. So people, as they go throughout their week, they, they hopefully remember that. So I'm working on my message and I'm like, someone else shared that verse. And I'm like, okay, this is it. How can I use this? And so as a parent of teenagers, um, our kids are, are dealing with a lot, especially this past year, the incredible pressures that it is just hard as a parent to watch and even know how to support sometimes. And our kids deal with a lot. So just having a conversation with my daughter, um, we have a great relationship and she's very open with me and just, she deals with a little bit of anxiety sometimes. And so we were just talking and I said, um, you know, would you like to help me emphasize this point on Sunday? Well, what does that mean? Well, I mean, you have to come up on stage. And she was like, mm. I said, listen, you're going to do great, whatever. And so we sat down and I explained to her the story of, of Moses and Aaron and her. And, you know, one of the other things you don't see uh, before that story happens is Moses or, or the Lord calling Moses to lead the Israelites. And Moses had a, a speech impediment. And, and he said to the Lord, I, I, you got, I don't think you have the right guy because I, you know, I'm not very eloquent in my speech. And I, some people think he stuttered, whatever. And he said, no, you're the right guy. He said, in fact, I'm going to give Aaron to be your mouthpiece. So just another beautiful example of coming beside somebody, Bible's filled with them. And so I said to Ava, you don't have to say anything, but you do have to stand there and hold some blocks. And when I explained it to her, you could just see her like, yeah, I, I want to be part of that. that. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think what she realizes is I hope she'll never forget that moment on stage. You know, that, that I hope was a big moment for her, but the illustration is life is heavy and hard and there is no reason. And God doesn't want us to walk through that alone. Absolutely not. Um, he, he surrounded us with people, friends, family, coworkers, neighbors, whatever. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was the model of an example of, of being there and caring for others in action. What can I do to help you? And so the point was, um, for Ava to stand there and to hold her, hold the things in life that she's dealing with, you know, right. uh, school and friends and fitting in and all those things that teenagers deal with and even more. And I could have added 10 more blocks, yeah. but, but the point is that we need people in our life to help us, to yeah. support us and, and to know that they're beside us. And encouraging words are very important, and, and that should always be part of our lives. But when we add action into that, we add the doing into the words, right. we all need that. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Hence your bottom line, right? Caring is love in action. It's not just love, it's love in action. That's yep. so good. And, and you talked on Sunday about a time in your life where you were weary and you were, you, your hands were heavy because you were carrying a lot. It was during, it was the year of 9-11, right? Um, but in addition to that, you were going through a devastating divorce. Yeah. And talk a little bit about that because you had some men that came into your life that help, helped to hold up your arms um, when you were weary. Yeah, uh, 2001, it's hard to believe it was 20 years ago, but um, life was, was pretty good at that point. Um, I had my own landscaping business, uh, had a wonderful partner, a business partner, another believer, good friends. The business was well, life was going well, but unfortunately, um, my marriage wasn't well. It was not well at all. And um, we, we were trying, but it was a clear indication that um, divorce was imminent. And uh, so that happened and never, you know, nobody gets married thinking they'll ever divorce, but it happened sadly. Mm -hmm. And um, so I find myself all of a sudden um, alone. I find myself burdened with caring for a home, a business. I, ha I actually pulled myself out of ministry. I wasn't healthy mentally. I was, I was not in a good place. Um, 
And I just felt like life was caving in and I felt alone. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I don't, I don't talk about this a whole lot, but I'll, I'm free to share it now because I, I hope it encourages somebody and learn from my mistakes. Yeah. I did isolate myself. Uh, that's kind of my trigger, uh, just being very open and transparent that when, when I feel like life is too much and thank goodness for my wife and she identifies that, but I can kind of, I, I call it the, the turtle shell where I just kind of pull into my shell and I put this hard exterior on and just kind of like, leave me alone, yeah. but you can't stay like that. And it's not healthy. Right. So, uh, I'll never forget. It was a Saturday morning and, and my business partner, Matt Zuber, um, we were supposed to play golf and he was just there trying to keep my mind busy and keep me doing things. And, um, I won't answer the phone. I just thought I don't, I don't want to deal with anybody today. And I felt myself going into this very dark depression, this dark place. And he kept calling and he kept calling and, it, and to the point where it was irritating. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I called him and he's like, you know, you didn't show up. You didn't call what's going on. Kind of reprimanding me. And I'm like, you're right. And he's like, is everything all right? That was the question I needed to hear. Are you all right? And for some reason, it struck a different chord. And I just said, no, I'm not, I'm not. I, I don't know what's going on, but I am not all right. And so we just, we just went out and just hung out and I actually ended up living with him after I sold my house uh, for a little bit. Here I'm a 32 year old guy, now single, divorced, living with my best friend. Like it was rough. Yeah. Um, and then there were two other men at GT that were very good friends with me and uh, had gone through divorce and we would just go out for breakfast. We would talk. Um, we didn't text because it was too hard at that time with flip phones. Um, <laughs> but we, we met often and I ju just knowing that I had a support system around me was life changing for me. You said, and I could, I'm sorry, go ahead. I just slowly felt myself coming out of this. Yeah. One of the things that you said on Sunday that I thought was so powerful is you said when we are in when we are authentic with a group of people, that was a small group of people, we can experience God's grace and love coming through others, which leads to freedom and transformation. And that's what you just said. Yep. Because they came alongside of you and they lifted up your arms, you experienced freedom and transformation. Your life was forever changed. And that it started with that one persistent friend saying, I'm not giving up on you. You're going to tell me how you're doing and we're going to get through this together. That's awesome. And, so and I would, I would encourage people. It's twofold. You have to be honest with those who are reaching out to you because I think it's, it's sometimes easy when someone says, how are you? We just kind of give the quick, oh, I'm good. I'm okay. Everything's good. Right. Listen, be honest. That's right. Now I know we need to be careful with that, but we all need, truth tellers in our lives and people that we trust that we can give the truthful answer. I'm not yeah. all right. I'm yeah. not all right. It's not good. So. So true. Oh, I love that. It reminds me of, um, well, I, I think to acknowledge something that I love about your, the way that you communicate, you are very authentic and you tell on yourself, right? I don't have this all figured out. I blow it. You know, when you were walking through the list of the, the fruit of the spirit and you got to like patience, you were like, yeah, no, working on that one, kind, you know, and I just, I love that. And I think what I love about that is it makes you real, right? Because people see you, you're a pastor on a stage and it's like, okay, He's got it all together, right? That's an assumption that I think a lot of people make. Um, I've had people say that to me. Well, you're a pastor. You wouldn't understand. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> no, that's not true. You know, yeah. we all suffer. We all go through difficult times. We go through difficult seasons. Um, life has its ups and downs. And we need people to celebrate us. But we also need people to hold up our arms when we're weary. And like you, you talked about, you um, the story in Mark chapter two with the four men that brought their friend who was a paralytic um, to Jesus. And they were willing to carve out, hoist him up onto a roof, carve out the roof and lower him down to Jesus. We need people like that in our lives. Um, people that will take us to Jesus, take us to the foot of the cross where we can find freedom and transformation. Um, and so it makes me think of Bill and Joan Umble. 
right? Mm -hmm. They, Bill and Joan Umble are group, small group leaders at our church, life group leaders at our church. And they are the epitome of what you preached on Sunday, right? Like they live out caring for others, putting love in action for people. And tell me just quickly, um, gosh, it's time is flying by here, but tell me quickly, you recently had a conversation with them. I've known them for many years um, as group leaders, and they've been through some really difficult seasons and um, several deaths with people in their group. And they, they're just incredible. So you've recently talked to them. So tell us a little bit about Bill and Joan. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I, I've known Bill and Joan, um, but I didn't really know them. Mm -hmm. And so um, this past week, uh, we had a funeral at the church and it was uh, a woman who was part of their life group for seven years, seven or eight years. And so I had to, the privilege to do the service and uh, I actually called them that morning and I just wanted to hear from them um, about Denise, mm -hmm. who was part of their life group. And uh, wow, uh, just they shared, I, I could have stayed on the phone for hours, no doubt, but they just shared how that life group, how they care for one another. Um, just amazing how Denise would take Mary Beth, Mary Beth dealt with uh, bone cancer and would take Mary Beth to her treatments and to her appointments. Well, the roles flip. Mary Beth is doing great. Praise God. Incredible story. God touched her. Well, now Mary Beth is taking to Denise to her appointments. So just, it, it's just, I believe exactly how Jesus modeled it and how the Lord wants us to be with one another. We Thank give you. and we receive. We're a support system for one another. So Bill and Joan lead this group. And I mean, they lead it well. <laughs> when it, they said something to me, the effects of, Eric, Pastor Eric, I just want you to know, we have the best life group. I challenge any other life group out there. We have the best. <laughs> Care for one another and live out the Jesus way. They, uh, Pastor Brian shared a devotion with us yesterday, yesterday um, in one of our meetings um, from John. And he just talked about like, we get to make an invisible God visible. Right. And that's exactly what, what they do and that, that what they do for one another and for so many others. But on Sunday, you said, let's be imitators of Jesus through our actions, not just our words. And then you said, it's easy to quote scripture, but try living it out, right? That's not so easy. I want to read, you You read, um, you talked a little bit about being salt and light, Jesus talking to us on, from on the Sermon in, on the Mount about being salt and light in Matthew chapter five. My favorite version to read this from, Jesus's words from, is the message version, Um so I'm going to read this right now because I want to talk about it a little bit. Matthew 5, 13 through uh, 16 says, let me tell you, this is Jesus. Let me tell you why you are here. You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? If you've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives by opening up to others. And here's the purpose, right? By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous father in heaven. And yep. that's what you see. That's what you experience in groups, right? Yep. And it's, I think you challenged us on Sunday to, to ask ourselves the question, am I living a life worth imitating? Because we all, we, we're all influencers. We all have people who are watching us and we all want to be able to say, as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, right? Not my words, but my right. actions, what I, what I do. One of the challenges that I um, had in my devotion the other day was how, how the question I was asking myself, or I felt the Lord asking me was how salty is my life, right? Am I bringing out the God flavors in this world? Um, and then I've just been praying, Lord, infuse me with your flavor. And when I blow it, and you talked about that on Sunday, um, like I said, with the fruit of the spirit, we blow it. So what do you do when you blow it? And why, why is a group 
so important because we all stumble, we all make mistakes. And so why do you think it's important to have a group of people where you can go and find accountability, find grace and forgiveness, find, right? Talk a little bit about that in this last couple of minutes. I think for me, so our situation a little different. Um, as a pastor, you're right. There's a preconceived idea that we sit in our office, we read our Bible, and we, we drink coffee all day. I wish that were true, but it's not. <laughs> um, we have normal lives. Um, I lose patience with my kids. I say unkind things to my wife. Like I, I blow it all the time. And so the important, I, I think for, for me personally, number one is be real. Just yeah. be real. You, you know, I said it in, in my sermon, the, the world's filled with imposters. Don't be one of those. Just be who you are. Now, we're always striving to be like Christ. Okay, we're a work in progress. That's sanctification. We're a work in progress. But just be real. And in a life group, you can be real. Because let's, let's just be truthful. Sunday morning, we put on our best. And we walk into church and we put the smile on, even though we could have been having a major argument with our spouse, we get out of the car and we're, we're, we're that. Okay. Right. It, listen, I, I get it. We've all been there. Um, but in a life group, you you're coming into someone's home. You're coming into our home. Marlene and I would host these. I, we love doing that. Take your shoes off, get yourself comfortable, be who you are. And you're able to be real it's a safe environment. It's an environment where you know people love you. They care for you. They're going to support you. I, I could give you unending stories. I, I, there were times that we gave and we received one of the, there's, there's two times. And unfortunately, it was always due to some health issues for me. But the most recent is when I had my heart attack. Um, didn't see that coming <laughs> at all. And so now I'm lying in the hospital. My wife is by my side, I'm giving her all the information of life insurance, bank account. I mean, it was real. And the first thing she did is she started texting our life group because I, I was in agony and I just wasn't sure what was going to happen. And I couldn't get comfortable. And, and I remember she started a prayer chain. And so she sent a prayer chain out and then she put her hand on my, my chest and she was uh, on the phone with another member of our life group and they prayed for me. Now I've been, it was 12 hours of struggling. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't rest within 10 seconds of that prayer. I was, I was gone. I was sleeping. I was resting finally. Mm -hmm. And so the support of that life group, making us meals, checking in on my kids and wife, how can I help you? Quite honestly, that's hard. For, I love giving receiving right. can be hard for me. Yeah. I had no choice. I had to receive mm -hmm. and it, it changes you. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was dramatic for us. Um, and, and it, it just does something to you. Um, but again, we go through seasons, you give and you receive. So you, life groups are just so powerful. And, and I would say to somebody who's kind of on the fence, how do I do that? Well, connect with GT church, Tony Roman at is our life group director amazing love her personality i think she has more energy than me it's incredible loves life groups believes in them um but you can contact her but i would say to you on the fence you got to get off the fence because it gets really uncomfortable on there you got to make a decision and everything starts with one one step one decision one word one whatever That's and i just true. pray that that you know that we're for you as a church and that there is a life group for you and we will help you find your fit and you won't regret it. Yeah, because we want that. I know you share my heart in that and, and we all want that for people, right? We want you to experience having that family, right? Having that group of people that will show up at 2 a.m., you know, that will just be there for you in tangible ways that will put love in action, right, Care, And then that, because that's where we grow, right? That's where we grow spiritually when we connect relationally. We say it all the time. Discipleship happens best in relationship. You can't isolate yourself. You talked about that. It's one of the enemy's greatest weapons is to just keep us off by ourselves. I'm good. I don't need anybody. That's not true. That's not how Jesus lived. That's not what Jesus modeled for us. So take that step. I couldn't agree with you more. And 
Eric, I know we've talked a little bit about, and, and Pastor Scott talked a couple of weeks ago in this last two minutes, if you just wrap us up by speaking directly to men, right? Because I think in, in some cases, it's easier for women to just step out and, and connect depending on how you're wired, right? Like step out and connect with other women and just talk. And like, that's just more natural, I think, yeah. um, more wired to do that. But for men, sometimes that's a, that's a great hesitation. I remember my husband, the first time I talked about joining a life group, he was like, yeah, if I can pick handpicked, pick every <laughs> single person, right. <laughs> like, and then he only wanted three. So, <laughs> but so talk about that though. Like why, why is that so important? Well, I can tell you, I've formed some of my greatest friendships through men's groups, um, through men's life groups. And, you know, I'm probably similar to your husband. I am an extrovert. I love being around people, but I can, um, I can be an introvert too. But um, I did about four years of men's ministry and I'll just be very honest. It was difficult because men and women are very different. We're wired very different. Women love to communicate. They love to have those conversations. Men, we can say what we're thinking in one sentence and be done. And we're good. So I get that that's a little more difficult for us. But let's be real. Men, stop trying to do life alone. Stop thinking you need to fix everything and you can fix everything. You can't. There are other men around you who love you, want to support you, help you, talk with you, walk beside you. We are in this together as a tribe. This is a tribal thing. And we need to stop walking in isolation and saying, I got this, because sometimes we don't have this. And so I would encourage you as a man, get connected in a group. I'm starting on March 3rd. There's, they're, they're, all, they're, they're available. Um, but please, guys, get in a group. I, I know it's scary and you don't have to say that. I'll say it for you, but it's going to be okay. We have a great time. And one of the things you said, Christine, that I, that I didn't say that's so true and important, you grow in your faith in a life group. We, we do our best Sunday mornings to, to give you that message and, and that, but you need more than that. It's more than that. Yeah. So getting in a group will help you grow. So do it. Do it. The Bible really does come to life when you when you wrestle with it, right? With a group of believers, like that. That is just powerful. Um, and I could say more about that because I love your preaching style. How you encourage us. I'm going to say it. How you encourage us to use our imagination when we read the Bible. Put ourselves like I remember on Sunday you were talking about. Imagine that being in that room and the dust is just coming down. The little pieces of the roof are falling down. Like that's the way we're supposed to read our Bible. And when we we're in a group together. We can wrestle those things out together. We can, it's, it's, it's a game changer. It's a total game changer. Okay. I'm going to ask you to do this um, because we're out of time. Will you pray for us? Absolutely. Um, and then yep. I'll wrap us up. Thank you. I'll, I'll never forget what changed my life with reading my Bible. Give this to Tom Reese. When I was teaching second graders, he said, Eric, remember this. It is a sin to bore somebody with the Bible. Right. That impacted me the rest of my life. I said, Lord, don't ever let me bore somebody with the Bible. So thank you, Pastor Tom. All right, let's pray. God, I just thank you for this opportunity to be here today, to be um, with you today, Lord God. And I pray for anyone who's hearing this right now, Lord God, who may be on the fence. I pray, God, that you in your loving way, get them off the fence and get them on the right side and get them on a team and get them in a life group and let them know that you have so much more for them, Lord God. And I pray for us as, as believers in Christ, as followers of Christ, help us to live a life of imitation, of illumination and initiation in people's lives. Help us to live out the word of God in our actions and our words, Lord God. Let us each day be salt and light. Let us be salty towards others. Let them, uh, let us be flavorful. Let our lives and our words and our actions, Lord God, and let us live as a light, a light at our workplaces and our families, our communities, Lord God. We want to be a light for Jesus Christ because we know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. So God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us today, Eric. Yeah. 
Again, if you missed Eric's message from this past Sunday, you can always go back and watch on our website or our YouTube channel. And don't forget to download the GT Church podcast so you don't miss out on any of our sermons or our Growing Together episodes. And if you'd like to learn more about life groups, now is the time. Don't wait. We have available, um, we have groups that are available right now. Just visit, visit our website, gtchurch.online. It's right on the homepage. Group link inf info is right there. But hurry because the groups are filling up. And next week, I'll be sitting down with Pastor Scott Kramer because this Sunday, we'll be kicking off our new series called What is Real? And he's going to be talking about what is real beauty. We designed this series because we know that in today's world, it can be hard to determine what the truth really is and how to know what to believe. And the real source of truth is God, and it can be found in his word in the Bible. But authentic faith doesn't just know the truth. It puts it into action with grace. So maybe you've been a Christian for a while, but you still have questions about what you can really do to make a difference in the world. Or maybe you're exploring faith and you don't know what you believe, or you're looking and you're looking for something true. Wherever you find yourself in life, we hope you will join us as we take a deep dive into the book of John to help us make sense of a seemingly senseless world. And in this seven-week series, we think you'll be inspired to truly understand and put into practice real truth real spirituality, real freedom, real justice, real love, real beauty. And on the final week, Easter, we will talk about what real power is. Real power is found in the resurrection of Jesus. We'll see you guys next week.